Hi everyone, my name is Mallory Carnes and I'm a violist. I went to Credo in 2019 and I'm really excited to be back to help with some of the different things this summer. And now I want to talk to you quickly about a technical thing that I actually didn't learn until my master's degree, but I really, really wish that I had learned a lot before then. I don't know if this is a similar experience for any of you, but I honestly never really worked on my technique that seriously until my master's degree. Um, you know, before that I kind of relied on my musicality and my uh, musical intuition and just a lot of hours of practicing the same passage over and over really slowly, kind of working it up and working it up and working it up and just hoping it would last in the concert um, when I was nervous and under pressure. And so when I got to my master's degree, uh, my teacher realized that pretty quickly. And um, as he makes most of his students do, he made me do an exercise which he likes to call ghost notes. Um, this definitely applies to violinists and violists. Probably cellists could benefit a lot from this as well. Um, and the idea of ghost notes is that you're actually playing every note as a harmonic instead of pushing your fingers all the way down, because the idea is that you'll then be able to move really quickly and nimbly and easy around the fingerboard, instead of having to push your finger all the way down and pick it back up. We don't actually need to do that in order to make a sound. So I'll just kind of demonstrate a little bit what that looks like. Hopefully you can see this is what it looks like when I press the string all the way down. Or for ghost notes, you just need to do this. So you can hopefully see in the video, there's still space between my fingers and the fingerboard. So instead of hearing... You're going to hear... Which is a really interesting exercise in both learning where you can access a lot of the different harmonics that you might um, find convenient or interesting to put in some of your other repertoire, and also in making sure your fingers know how to fall in exactly the position that you want them to, because otherwise the harmonics will not speak quite like you want them to. Um, so there are kind of two different pieces that my teacher uses as a way to teach this. One is uh, the CPE Bach Solfeggetto. William Primrose actually arranged it for viola. Um, so here's a quick snippet of that exercise. Well, I'll just stop there. You can get the idea. It's not quite what you'd think it might sound like. I've had people uh, kind of walk by my practice room and ask me, you know, do you intend to perform that? Like, what are you doing? But obviously the answer is no, I don't intend to perform it that way. It's an exercise in light fingers and fast fingers. Um, the other piece that he uses, which I will switch to quickly, is um, Paganini's Perpetual Motion, which obviously there's a version for violin, and there's also an arrangement, a transcription for viola by Wieland. Um, so here's a little bit of how that goes. I'll just stop there. Sorry, it wasn't a cadence. Um, and so both of those, that one's marked Allegro Vivace and the other one is marked Presto Leggero. And so you can tell from both of those, I wasn't even playing them, you know, close to a performance tempo or what you could take as a tempo. But because of the light fingers, it makes it a lot easier to shift and to feel your way around the fingerboard. So that's one of the main reasons for doing this exercise. And the other aspect of this exercise that I found really helpful is the idea that when you start learning a piece, you know, maybe it's Tybalt's Death from Romeo and Juliet, the Prokofiev version, um, or something like that, that just flies. It's a ton of really fast notes. Maybe it's the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, whatever it may be. 
it's a series of fast notes in a row that you really need to be nimble for. You need to be able to move around the fingerboard quickly and easily. And so you can take any passage and apply this concept of ghost notes to it. And the biggest thing that my teacher emphasizes during that process is that you don't want to start out necessarily playing really, really slowly. You know, sometimes we'll cut the metronome tempo down in half and start one E and uh, two E and uh, while we're learning it. Um, but my teacher actually emphasizes that you should just start and know what tempo you're going to be in and play the first note, play the first and the second note in tempo. Then when you're ready to add the third note, play the first three notes in tempo, play the first four notes, five notes, six notes in tempo so that you're not trying to build in or undo bad habits that you might have built in while you were learning it in a slower tempo, such as using too much bow or a, wrong, a different articulation than the one you intended or something like that. So for example, if you were learning perpetual motion, you would not want to go You'd want to go. And so on and so forth. You know, I got up to like six or seven notes there, and that might take a long time or a lot of work, depending on what the notes are. Um, in Tybalt's Death, I know that adding seven notes would take me a really long time because it's just a really tricky passage. Um, perhaps the Paganini or the CPE Bach are slightly easier because they follow more arpeggiated or scale patterns. Um, so those are really good ways to start working on ghost notes. And then you can take that and apply it to lots of your other rep. So again, I'm just going to do a quick C major scale in ghost notes so that you can reinforce the concept and then have fun, go try it on your instrument. <laughs> And I'll come down this way so you can see my fingers, hopefully. And so all of that keeps my fingers really light and my thumb doesn't need to be crammed anywhere. Really free to move up and down. Now go pick a fun, fast passage, maybe something you were planning to learn this summer. I know I've been working on learning the viola part to the full uh, version of Ein Heldenleben and Don Juan. Uh, have fun looking at some excerpts or maybe some tricky spots in your own music and try some ghost notes to see how light you can keep your fingers. And then at the end, when you're ready to perform, all you need to do is add a teensy bit of finger pressure as well as a teensy bit of bow speed and those will turn it back into not sounding like harmonics so that the audience uh, doesn't need to plug their ears. Enjoy!